Hello everyone, this is the LEGO Creator Classic Ford Mustang. Now, if you were to pass judgment on this entire set based solely upon what you're looking at right now, just the exterior, the first impression at that, I would say that would be okay. As a matter of fact, I would very much support that. Because for me, having built this from its over 1400 pieces, many of them small, some of them fairly large, Having spent time going through it, looking at it, checking out all of its features, and researching pictures of the real source material on the internet for quite some time, I can tell you that, to me, most of the value that I get from owning this right now is what you're looking at right now. Just that external appearance, which is really nice, wouldn't you say? It just has a very commanding presence, a lot of confidence. And I can tell you, having researched into the source material, the more you look at this specific vehicle and you look for specific details of this specific vehicle, I'm talking about the 1967 Mustang GT Fastback, full option with big block, the more you understand just how much respect went into the design of this. Respect for the source material and respect for its fans. Now, personally, I am not a hyper fan of first gen Mustangs, but I can definitely appreciate the amount of effort that went into this. Not just making something that looks very much like a Mustang, but trying to make that specific vehicle and capturing all of its key defining details accurately. Now, the set does come with a sticker sheet, but most of the important details are covered with prints. So the stripe going all the way down the top is done with prints. These 67 GT specific louvers on the C pillars are done with prints and that had to be two separate designs for the two sides. These lower stripes are all prints. Not the best work there. They don't all line up just perfectly, but from any reasonable distance, they look pretty decent. I think they look better in person than on camera and you know, when you're not looking at them up so incredibly close as this. That GT logo right there is also a print. The prancing horse in the grill is a print. The license plates are stickers. On the back, the filler cover flap also uses a sticker. And then in the engine compartment, there's one more prancing horse logo print for that one by one round tile that represents the oil filler cap. Now, there are a lot of nice details. All the other uh, decorations that you see here are done with stickers. So you got your air filter cover right there. The valve covers are also adorned with stickers. The fan shroud has a sticker here, but there are a lot of nice details that are put in the right places and with roughly the right shapes here. The thing that's most off is the distributor cap, which is a little bit large, but look, they even got the uh, Vacuum Advance stock sticking out on the base of it. This is a full option car, so they've got the AC pump over here. Uh, the radiator is shaped up nicely, got a coolant line. They even got the battery terminal set up with proper colors there. This is a horse rain piece done in black to give you some of the spark plug wires going across. You know, only four of them, not eight, but it looks pretty proper. I think it would have been a bit, uh, a bit strained to get a full eight in there, though it may have been possible. They even have the belt suggested in there with a couple of of uh, rubber bands. And one more detail over here, you've got the windshield wiper fluid bottle, the washer reservoir that has the light aqua color to represent the fluid that's actually inside that is full. The radiator also uses textured bricks, so that looks extra good if you come all the way back around here to look at the, the back on view. In the marketing of this car, they made a big deal about the doors and how they don't have gaps at the back to leave room for them to open. Normally they have to have those gaps for legal connections and, you know, proper non-stressed uh, operation of any, you know, any movable item on an official Lego model. And they talk a lot about how uh, special pieces had to be molded to make that possible and could never have been done before. You've got a two by eight curve here, which is very nice. And you can see that up on the roof as well for context. So this is a classic two by 10 curve piece here. It has the extra little extension at the end. And these two by eights follow that same curve. You know, you got that nice long, long slope to them. So that's used here, but that's really not necessary for the operation of the door. And also this uh, 
one by two by one curved piece with no studs on it. So it's attached, uh, its, its top is here and its base is down here on one of those dark blue plates. You know, that just fits right into the area right there where it's closing up. But I mean, this could have been built without that completely. That part is not necessary for this to close up. The reason that this is able to close up is that the hinges are placed all the way out here. So you have enough room and the door is thin enough that it's able to fit within the allowable tolerance between Lego pieces. Now there is some friction in there, but it does not bother me at all. I mean, this, this, this just works fine and looks good. Also simulated on the inside is the actual hinge on the real thing. Uh, when I was growing up, one of my parents had an old Ford. It was a 68 and it had this exact same door hinge. So I'm very familiar with that. It wasn't a Mustang, but it was the, the same mechanism. So it's nice to see that and familiar to me to see that in action. And you know, it just looks cool. To check out the rest of the interior, I'm actually gonna pop the roof off here. And it has a rear view mirror, which is celebrating a little bit the chase scene from the movie Bullet. That's supposed to be a 68 charger, but here it's in the rear view, whereas the Bullet Mustang was what was in the, the rear view of the charger in the movie. And this one also has its headlights exposed, but I'm sure that is a reference there. I'm also gonna pop up these frames just to give you a nice clear view of the very tan interior got some nice shaping for the seats there got the the shifter for the automatic transmission you're able to move that forward and back that's pretty cool the radio unit there has a sticker and the two dials just are printed pieces that we've had for quite a long time now this does have working steering, which is fantastic, especially when you consider all the details that are in the engine compartment. This was hidden away pretty nicely. And that is rather fancy, in fact, how that is done. It's one of the more interesting things in the entire build. You can see the mechanism. Well, I guess the best way to look at it is from underneath. This huge gear is used here and that's what's connected directly ultimately to or nearly correct nearly directly to the actual steering rack and the components that are going side to side and these wheels are also new for 2019 that's also a pretty big deal actually you can see brick discs behind there but uh, these are very small to be allowing the rotation within or at the hubs, the hubs are actually inside the wheels. So that's actually pretty good engineering there and nice part design to enable that to work. It has a pretty good range of motion as well and it's all hidden away pretty well. So this is definitely a, a bit of a design win, a, a major design win, in fact. A lot of Lego vehicles have had working steering but this is probably the fanciest that they've done and the most work that they've put into pulling off such a fundamental feature. So they deserve significant credit for that. That was an effort that involved multiple people, not just a single designer. Even in the back, the seats are pretty cool. They're nicely textured. The colors are pretty good and you can even push those down. I don't know if this was the original intent, but you can turn them down like that. Now you see there's there's a gear back in there. There's a little bit of a mechanism at the rear and this is this is odd. This is strange to me because there's actually a lot of work that goes into building that. I'm sure there was a lot of work that went into designing this feature. The ability to jack up the rear of this thing significantly and you know, you've got suspension linkages there. You've got this whole cantilevered mechanism. You're turning right from here. It's rotating a worm gear. It's moving all these linkages around. So much went into that just to be able to, to give it an, an aggressive rake. I will admit that looks pretty cool. You know, it's, it's something that was fairly common for old hot rod jobs to lift the vehicle up and give it some extra room for some more weight transfer. 
That actually goes a little bit higher. That's the maximum right there. That's definitely too far. But, you know, you can go in between. I think it looks a little bit better if you if you don't take it all the way to its extreme. But you can also bring it down to its lowest point. It's an interesting feature. It was definitely very well done. Personally, I would have preferred just working suspension, even if it was just at the rear. You know, a little spring system would have been nice. But, you know, the designer went above and beyond. I don't mind it. Now, while I'm back here, speaking of going above and beyond, also included are the parts to build this and the instructions to build this. A Shelby-style rear spoiler that just connects directly to the trunk lid there. Doesn't look so great from the back with all these anti-studs exposed, but you have to compromise there. It has to look good from one side. And in this case, I think it looks good from the correct side. The shaping there is is very good for the, the Shelby body kit. And up front, they... Uh, I would have expected for an aftermarket uh, lower section, uh, air dam or front splitter section, I would have expected something inspired by the R, the uh, GT350R. I'm not sure if that, that one was available in this exact year, but instead you get this road racing splitter air dam thing, which actually looks really nice as well, but it just, it just demands side skirts to go with it. You know, something that I would expect to see not in 1967, but more recently for not necessarily in absolute modern days, but at least late 70s for road racing purposes. I think most of the the classic road racing Mustangs in, in 67 or thereabouts were notch backs and the fast backs that were raced were the, the R's, uh, which had a, a different look entirely or different designs back here different stuff on the side little things but this is pretty cool nevertheless and it's not the end there are more things that you can do to customize this pop the scoop off that comes off as just one sub assembly there very easily i'm also going to take the air cleaner off that entire unit put this back and add in this <laughs> <laughs> Big ol' supercharger. Got the three butterflies up there. You got even the linkage on the side. They don't give you an extra belt for this, but I mean, this will pop right in there. It's quite oversized, but I don't mind it. Definitely helps to have the spoiler back there to help balance things a little bit. I personally wouldn't run a, uh, an air dam with that. I think those don't really go together quite so well, but that's entirely up to you. You can mix and match as you like. And if you're gonna do that, you might as well do straight pipes, you know, and just run your headers right on down. And those actually attach very securely. So now this is getting very, very hot rotted. Now add a little extra rake to it. I don't wanna go all the way with it, just in between. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty hot look also. This is definitely too big, but, you know, totally get what they're going for. And the, the builds are pretty proper, you know, proper Lego pieces. Everything goes together nice and tightly. And it changes the look pretty significantly, which is great. Good pieces to include. Uh, stuff that I think a lot of fans will appreciate as options. Yeah, definitely good stuff. And for just one more detail... Let's open this up and throw in a bottle of Nas. <laughs> so get a little extra boost from that. Place that wherever you want. I think that I think that's a good good spot. I think I have to move it back just one to get it to fit down in there a little bit better. There we go. It's more secure. Yeah, and that does it. Oh yeah, if you're running your headers out the sides, then you probably want to remove the stock exhaust as well. And that's made to be done quite easily. Since there was a sticker sheet used for this set, they went ahead and used it some more for some extra license plate options. This is a double entendre right here with a reference to the designer's last name and also P-51 being the Mustang uh, prop fighter from World War II. Here's a little bit of love for Australia, something that we don't see very much from LEGO, unfortunately. 
This is for the UK and this is for Germany. Here are the spare pieces that I was left with, including one of the precious new prints, the oil filler cap part right there. And the rest of the stuff is pretty much what you would expect, you know, just the one by one and smaller type items. VIP club members who ordered this were also able to get this exclusive keychain, which is a very weighty piece, and it's got the two sides to it, very nicely produced. And you can kind of spin this around. Let's see if I can get it to do its... Uh, uh, uh. There you go, do its thing, like so. Yeah, it's a nice little add-on, a little special collectible. So all in all, this is pretty fantastic. You know, I, I always try to look for things that I don't like, even in sets that I do like on the whole. And similarly, I try to find things that I like, even in sets that I dislike on the whole or I'm not interested in on the whole. But there's very, very little to complain about here. I'm, I'm sure if I was a, a Mustang super fan, I, it looks like I should have turned these exhausts back. I should have, should have thought of that a little bit. But if I was a Mustang super fan, classic Mustang super fan, I'm sure that I would be able to go through and nitpick a lot more of the, the small details. But as it is, being someone who has seen these vehicles all my life, you know, for, for some decades now, and who did spend a fair amount of time looking at pictures of different models of the Gen 1 for uh, Mustangs and also this specific one, the 67 Mustang GT Fastback, full option with the big block 390. Uh, I just, I just can't hate on it. I, I mean, just looking at this, I, I, I see Mustang. I see what I'm used to seeing of classic Mustangs on the street at car shows. Uh, having these extra options is is just kind of icing on the cake. I think that the stock form of it is is the best form, although the Shelby style spoiler back there is a very nice touch. Yeah, just just a real a real triumph. It's just it's just done right. Definitely the work of true master builders and master designers who really cared about what they were doing. And that's about it from me. If you want to check out the build process for this, I did record that and put it up in a fairly long video on my build channel. I will link to that right now, and I'll talk to you again soon.